Good day, Wizards, and welcome back to Economics Grade 12. We've been through terms like merit goods, demerit goods, and we've also been through your topic of imperfect competition. Now, looking further into your topic of imperfect competition and market failures, your next term is your lack of information. So, let's dig a bit deeper into that. Consumers, workers and entrepreneurs do not have the necessary information in order to make rational decisions. So when there's a lack of information, we do not have enough material necessary to make decisions rationally. This then results in resources not being allocated efficiently. So resources aren't given out efficiently. Consumers, to maximize their benefits, they need detailed information about goods and services. And although technology offers this to the consumer, they obviously don't have the perfect information for them. With workers, they're often unaware of job opportunities that are out there because of a lack of information. With entrepreneurs or business owners, lack of information on costs, on availability and on productivity are factors that will then affect the production and it impacts the effectiveness of production. Immobility of factors of production. Labor takes time to move from one area to another. The supply of skilled labor cannot be increased because of the time that it takes to be trained or educated. Physical capital like factory buildings or infrastructures like telephone lines, they can't just be reallocated easily because it's a fixed source. So structural changes like a change from producing plastic packets to paper packets or shifting from labor intensive production to computer based production. This requires a change in the laborers skills themselves. It requires a change in employment and in work patterns and this change takes time. So when it's physical capital, factory buildings, infrastructure, any sorts of assets that are fixed and need to be changed, it is a lot more difficult and it does take a lot more time. Then we look at imperfect distribution of income and wealth. Income distribution is the market system being neutral on issues of income distribution. Discrimination is when earnings are distorted for women and minority groups or disabled persons and people that are subject to illnesses or incapacity. So discrimination is when people are being discriminated against or unfairly treated with their earnings because of the gender that they are or because they're disabled, which is not allowed. The market produces goods and services only for those who can afford it is also a form of discrimination. This sometimes leads to people having too many goods while others have too few goods. So this is the imperfect distribution of income and wealth. The difference in income occurs between them because there is a difference in market power or unequal educational opportunities. So because of this, there's discrimination involved in their inheritance itself. The consequences or effects of market failures is your next topic. Let's look at inefficiencies in markets. So there are two types of inefficiencies which we named in our key terms that are possible, namely productive inefficiency and technical inefficiency. So productive inefficiency occurs when resources are not used appropriately to produce the maximum number of goods at the lowest cost and the best quality. So this would be productive inefficiency. If we don't have goods that are cheap enough for us to buy and are very good quality, then the production side of it is inefficient. Allocative inefficiency occurs when the types of quantities of goods or services are produced but they're not what's best for the consumers themselves. So they've been produced but it's not what the consumer demands in the market. Next we look at externalities. So remember we said there were negative externalities and positive externalities. With negative externalities 
They bear a private cost. The cost of producing the actual product and a social cost, a cost is suffered by society because of this. So if the social cost of a good was added to the private cost of a good, the final price would be pushed up and fewer goods would be supplied because it's too expensive or too costly to produce in order for us to supply it. So therefore, fewer goods would be supplied because of the social and private cost on society. The government has used three methods to reduce negative externalities. They've carried out campaigns in order to change or in order to persuade people from causing negative externalities. Levying taxes on goods that cause negative externalities, for example, taxes are levied on cigarettes and alcohol. So there's a higher tax or higher input and output tax on cigarettes and alcohol being produced and being sold. Passing laws and regulations to prevent activities that cause negative externalities is another method that the government has taken. So by passing laws and regulations, tobacco companies aren't allowed to advertise. There are laws that regulate the amount of air pollution and waste. So these are some of the things that the government has put into place in order to reduce the negative externalities in our country and to make sure that the economy is somewhat balanced. Then we look at positive externalities. If people acknowledge the social benefit of a specific goods or service, they demand more of that good. The price of this good would therefore increase because the more benefit it is to you, the better it helps you, the more readily available it is, the demand increases. And remember, when a demand for a good increases, then in order to increase the supply of the good, the pricing of that good would also increase. So the government encourages positive externalities by advertising on radio or television, providing education, providing health care, providing other services at low cost or at free cost, no cost at all, is some of the ways that they've helped us to encourage positive externalities. By providing consumer subsidies or by making these consumer subsidies lower than the cost of a good. This is encouraging positive externalities usage. So now that we know what impact government has or what they've been changing, let's look at the government intervention itself. And what exactly are these rules, regulations and laws that they're passing on in order to improve our economy? So firstly, direct controls. The government can pass laws or use existing legislative framework to control businesses that generate negative externalities. Now, with imperfect markets, firms in an imperfect market supply a limited quantity of goods and a limited quantity of services at a very high price. The government uses its laws on competition to prevent exorbitant prices that are charged by firms to ensure that the market is actually free and to prevent harmful collusion and encourage foreign competition, which then helps keep the prices of our goods low so that we, can, or we are able in some way to compete with the foreign exchange. So establishing what our minimum wages need to be. When the government enforces a minimum wage, it means that workers have to be paid a certain wage amount and not anything less than this. Can you imagine going home with less than your expenses or less than what you barely need to survive? Then also looking at setting maximum prices or price ceilings. The government sets a maximum price ceiling below the market price to make sure that goods are more affordable for everyone in the market. Maximum prices allow the poor greater access to certain goods and services that they wouldn't have access to if there weren't these price ceilings. So a maximum price is set on goods like basic foods or housing or transport. In South Africa, the price of petrol 
diesel fuel and paraffin are controlled by their maximum prices itself. Then looking at setting minimum prices or price floors. The government sets a minimum price at some point above the market price. This is done to enable producers to make a comfortable profit within their organization and thus encourages them to supply important essential goods. Then we look at taxes and subsidies. Remember we said that this is an externality or this is something that's added on that's not included in the cost of the good itself. So levying taxes. Governments come and intervene in the market by levying taxes to recover that external cost. These taxes will increase the price and they'll result in a decrease in production. So because they increase the price of the goods itself, production will then decrease. This could help to reduce a negative externality like pollution. So believe it or not, something like taxes directly or indirectly affects pollution. So providing producer subsidies. The government actually provides subsidies to producers in order to encourage them to increase their production in goods. Your supply then increases. So can you see the difference? A supply would usually decrease when these minimum prices are set on goods, but it would increase when subsidies are provided by the government. Producer subsidies are often given to suppliers of agricultural products such as milk, wheat and maize. Subsidies that are lower um, will actually lower the cost of producing goods and thus the market price of these goods are lowered as well. So your supply increases, we get more goods produced, but the prices or the cost of these goods are lower. If we look at the redistribution of wealth, traditional methods include the levying of various taxes and the provision of free services like services in kind and cash benefits to the poor. Implementing redress methods like the use of law to enforce redistribution includes BEE, affirmative action, empowerment, land restitution, land redistribution, and property subsidies, for example, RDP houses. The government can then implement or use many other ways in order to improve income distribution and in order for us as an economy to overcome market failure. We need to learn to live with the COVID virus, you know, the new normal, at least for the next few months. And we have just what you need to make sure you never miss a single school lesson. And it's absolutely free. Mahala! High quality, powerful, animated lessons for all your subjects. So don't spend a cent until you have tried IWAS. It's everything you need. All video lessons, textbooks, workbooks, exam prep. We want you to ace 2021.